Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's day-long coverage of Women in Data Science 2023. Live from Stanford University, I'm Lisa Martin. We've had some amazing conversations today with my wonderful co-host, as you've seen. Tracy Zhang joins me next for a very interesting and inspiring conversation. I know we've been bringing them to you, we're bringing you another one here. Dr. Irene Danquamolan joins us, the Chief Medical Officer at Marty Health and a speaker at WIDS. Welcome, Irene, it's great to have you. Thank you, I'm Thank delighted you to here. be here. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So you have an MD and a Master of Public Health. COVID must have been an interesting time for you with an MPH. Very much so. Yeah, talk yes. a little bit about you, your background, and, and Marty Health, this is interesting. This is a brand new startup. This is a digital health equity startup. Yes, yes, so I'll, tell you, I'll start with my story, a little bit about myself. So I was actually born in Ghana um, I finished high school there and, and came here for college. I, um, what would I say, I, I, after I finished my undergraduate, I went to medical school at Dartmouth. Um, and I always knew I wanted to go into public health as well as medicine. So my medical um, education was actually five years. I did the MPH and my medical degree. Um, at the same time, I got my MPH from Yale School of Public Health. Um, and after I finished, um, I trained in internal medicine at um, Johns Hopkins. And after that, I went into public health. Um, I am currently living in Maryland, so I'm in Bethesda, Maryland, and that's where I've been. Uh, and um, really enjoyed public health, community health, combining that aspect of sort of prevention and, and wellness and into and, and also working in um, making sure that we have community health clinics and safety net clinics. So uh, great experience there. Um, I also had the privilege of after eight years in public health, um, I went to the National Institutes of Health. Oh wow. Where I basically um, worked in clinical research, mm -hmm. um, with basically on minority health and health disparities. So I was, I was in various leadership roles and um, helped to advance the science of health equity, uh, working in collaboration with a lot of scientists and researchers at the NIH, um, really to advance the science. Where did your interest in health equity come from? Was there a defining moment when you were younger and you thought, this, there's a lot of inequities here, we have to do something about this. Where did that interest start? I, um, that's a great question. I think I, this influence was basically maybe from my upbringing as well as my family and um, also what I saw around me in Ghana, a lot of preventable diseases. Um, I always say that my grandfather on my father's side was a great influence, my, inspired me and influenced my career because he was one, the only sibling really that went to school and as a result, um, he was able to earn enough money and, and built you know, a hospital um, wow. Wow. in the hometown. Oh um, it started as a 20 bed hospital and now it's a 350 <gasps> bed hospital wow, that's amazing. in our hometown. And he knew that education um, was important mm -hmm. and, and vital as well for well-being. And so um, he really inspired, you know, his work inspired me. And um, I, I remember in residency, I went with a group of residents to this hospital mm -hmm. in Ghana um, just to help over a summer um, break. So um, a, during a summer where we went and helped take care of the sick patients and actually learn, right, what it is like to uh, care for so many patients. And yeah. Um, yeah. It, was, it was really a humbling experience, but that really inspired me. I think um, also being in this country and when I came to the US, US and really saw firsthand how patients are treated differently mm -hmm. based on their background or socioeconomic status. Um, I did see firsthand, you know, that kind of unconscious bias. Yeah. Um, and, you know, drew me to the field of health disparities uh, research and wanted to mm -hmm. learn more and do more and contribute. 
Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was curious, just when did the data science aspect like taps in? Like, what did you decide that okay, data science is going to be a problem-solving tool to like all the problem you just said? Yeah, that's a good question. So while I was at the NIH, um, in I spent eight years there, and precision medicine was launched mm -hmm. at that time, and there was a lot of heightened interest in big data mm -hmm. and how big data could help really revolutionize medicine and healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, and I got the opportunity to uh, go to, you know, uh, there was an opportunity where they were looking for physicians or um, deputy chief health officer at IBM. And so I went to IBM. I Watson Health was being formed as a new business unit, and mm -hmm. I was one of the first deputy chief health officers uh, really to lead the data and the science evidence. And that's where I realized, you know, we could really, you know, the technology in healthcare has really, um, there's been a lot of data mm -hmm. that I think we're not really using or optimizing to make sure that we're yeah. taking care of our patients. Yeah. Um, and so that's wha how I got into data science and making sure that we are building technologies using the right data um, to advance health equity. Right, so talk yeah. a little bit about health equity. We mentioned you're with Marty Health. You, you've been there for a short time, but Marty Health is also quite new, just a few months old. Digital health equity. Talk about what Marty's vision is, what its mission is, to really help start dialing down a lot of the disparities that you talked about that you see every day. Yeah, so I, I've been so privileged. I, I recently joined Marty Health as their chief medical officer, chief health officer. Um, it's a startup that is actually trying to promote a value-based care also promote patient-centered care for patients that are, are experiencing a social disadvantage as a result of their race, ethnicity. Um, and we're starting to look at, focused on patients that have sickle cell disease. Okay. Because we realize that that's a population, you know, we know sickle cell disease is, is a genetic disorder. Mm -hmm. it's, it impacts a lot of um, patients that are from endem areas that are endemic malaria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and most of our patients here are African-American. Um, and when, you know, they suffer so much stigma and discrimination in the healthcare system mm -hmm. um, and complications from their this, this sickle cell disease. And so what we want to do that we feel like sickle cell is a litmus test for disparities. And we want to make sure that they get inpatient centered care we want to make sure that we're leveraging data and the research that we've done in sickle cell disease, especially on the continent of Africa, okay. mm -hmm. and provide, promote better care, quality care for the patients. That's so inspiring. You know, we've yeah. heard so many great stories today. Were you able to watch the keynote this morning? Yes. I music. loved how it, it always in inspires me. This conference is always, we were talking about this all day, how you walk in the Ariaga Alumni Center here where this event is held every year and the, the vibe is powerful, it's positive, mm -hmm. it's encouraging, it's, it's, it's a community. Inspiring, they, yeah. It's absolutely. Inspiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a move, WIDS is a movement, they've created this community where you feel, I don't know, kind of superhuman. I, why can't I do this? Why not me? We heard some great stories this morning about data science in terms of, uh, of applications. You have a great application in terms of health equity. We heard about it in police violence, yes. um, which is yeah. uh, an epidemic in this country, for sure, as we know. There's too, this happens too often. Mm -hmm. How can we use data and data science as a facilitator of learning more about that so that that can stop? I think that's so important for more people to understand all of the broad applications of data science, whether it's police violence or climate change, or drug discovery, or health inequities. And health, yeah. The, mm -hmm. the potential, I think we're scratching the surface, yeah. but the potential is massive. It is. And this is an event that really helps women and underrepresented minorities think, why not me? Why can't I get involved in that? Yeah, and I always say we, we use data to make a lot of decisions, yeah. and mm -hmm. especially in healthcare, we want to be careful about how 
we are using data because this is impacting the health and outcomes of our patients. And so um, science evidence is really critical, yeah. you know. Um, we want to make sure that data is inclusive mm -hmm. and we have yes. quality data yes. um, and it's transparent. Mm -hmm. um, our clinical trials, I always say, are not always diverse and inclusive. And if that's going to form the evidence base or data points, um, then we're doing more harm yeah. than good right. for our patients. Uh, and so data science, it's, it's huge. I mean, we need a robust, responsible, mm -hmm. trustworthy data science agenda. Trust, you just brought up trust. Yeah. That when we talk about data, we can't not talk about security and privacy and ethics, but trust yeah. is table stakes. We have to yeah. be able to evaluate the data and trust in it exactly. and what it says and the story that can be told from it. So that trust factor is, I think, foundational to data science. We'll see what happened with COVID, right? I mean, when the pandemic came Definitely. out, Everyone, I mean, wanted information. We yeah. wanted data. We wanted data we could trust. There was a lot of hesitancy even with the vaccine, yeah. right? And uh, so public health, I mean, like you said, we had to do a lot of work making sure that the right information from mm -hmm. the right data was being translated or conveyed to the to our communities. And so you're to totally right. I mean, data is... And, and good information, relevant data is always key. Mm -hmm. Is well, there anything? Oh, sorry. Ahead. Is there anything Marty House is doing in like ensuring that you guys get the right data that you can put trust in it? Yes, absolutely. And and so this is where we are. You know, part of it would be getting data, real world evidence data for patients who are being seen in the healthcare system with sickle cell disease, mm -hmm. so that we can personalize the data. Um, to those patients mm -hmm. and provide them with the right treatment, right intervention that they need. Um, and, and so part of it would be doing predictive modeling mm. on some of the data, risk stratifying risk, who in the sickle cell patient population is at risk of progressing yeah. or getting, uh, you know, they all often get crisis, uh, vaso-occlusive crisis because the cells, you know, the blood cell sickles and you want to avoid those chest crises. Mm -hmm. And so part of what we'll be doing is, you know, doing using predictive modeling to target those at risk mm -hmm. of the disease being, pro you know, progressing so that we can put in preventive measures. It's all about prevention. Yeah. It's all about making sure that they not be in, you know, going to the hospital yeah. or the emergency room where sometimes they end up, you mm -hmm. know, in pain and wanting pain medicine yeah. and so. Do you see AI as being a critical piece in the transformation of healthcare, especially where inequities are concerned? Absolutely, and and when you say AI, I think it's responsible AI and, yes. and making <laughs> sure that it's that's such a good point. Yeah, very. Um, with the right data, with relevant data, mm -hmm. um, is definitely key. I think there is so much data points that healthcare has. You know, you know, in health in the healthcare space, there's uh, fiscal data, biological data, there's environmental data, um, and we're not using it to uh, the full capacity yeah. or full potential. Yeah. And I think AI can do that mm -hmm. um, if we do it carefully and, like I yeah. said, responsibly. That's a key word. You talked about trust, responsibility, where we, where data, data science, AI is concerned. Yeah. It yeah. has to be not an afterthought, it has to be yeah. intentional. Exactly. And there needs to be a lot of education yes. around it. Mm -hmm. Most people think oh, AI is just for the technology, you yeah. know, um, yeah. right. group. And, yes. and But I think we, we're all part of, I mean, everyone needs to make sure that we are collecting the right amount of data. I mean, I think we all play a part, right? We do. Mm -hmm. we In do. making sure that we have responsible AI, we have, you know, good, data, quality data, mm -hmm. and the data science is, uh, is a multidisciplinary field, I it think. It is, yeah, which is one of the things that's exciting about it, is it is multidisciplinary. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so many of the people that we've talked to in data science mm -hmm. have these very non-linear paths to get there, and so they, br I think they yes. bring mm -hmm. such diversity of thought right. 
and backgrounds and yes. experiences mm -hmm. and thoughts and voices, that helps train the AI models with data that's more inclusive. Yes. Dropping down the volume on the bias that we know is there. Mm -hmm. it, to be successful, it, it has to. Definitely, it, it definitely, totally. Agree. What are some of the things as we wrap up here that you're looking forward to accomplishing as part of Marty Health? Like maybe what's on the roadmap that you can share with us for Marty as it approaches the, the second half of its first year? Yes, it's all about promoting health equity. Yeah. It's all about, I mean, there's so much, uh, well, I would start with, you know, Part of the healthcare transformation is making sure that we are promoting care that's based on value mm -hmm. and not volume. Mm -hmm. Care that's based on good health outcomes, quality health outcomes, and not just on, you know, the quantity. And so, um, Mari Health is trying to promote that value-based care. We are envisioning a world in which everyone can live their full life potential, mm -hmm. have the best health outcomes, um, and provide that patient-centered precision care. And we and all want that. Vision. We all want yes. that. We expect yes. that precision and that personalized experience in our consumer lives, why not in healthcare? Well, mm -hmm. thank you, for Irene, Definitely. for joining us on the program today, thank talking you. about what you're doing to really help drive the volume up on health equity and raise awareness for the fact that there's a lot of inequities in there we have to fix. We have a long way to go. We have, yes. But people like you are making an impact and we appreciate you joining theCUBE today and sharing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for you sharing. for having me oh, here. Our pleasure. For our guest and Tracy Zhang, this is Lisa Martin from WIDS 2023, the eighth annual Women in Data Science Conference brought to you by theCUBE. Stick around, our show wrap will be in just a minute. Thanks for watching.